you know, I was just had a particular vision of, of a certain styles that I wanted to get into. Um, so, you know, I met Gabriel at a, at a party and, you know, we started, we were playing like, like, estamos tocando cumbia en la calle, you know what I'm saying? We became friends right away. Um, Eduardo, I had like met, I had met him through different uh, parties throughout the years. And eventually we started talking and we, we had a mutual love for, for Caetano Veloso and, uh, you know, particularly his album Franza. So that, which, which nobody in our circle knew about. So that was kind of what united us. When I joined the band, I didn't even know what a Chicano was. I'm Colombian, so I was just like, what am I getting into? You know, like, what is this word? Or why, why you're combining these two words together? What am I getting into? But I was so happy to be connected with people and making music finally, you know, being a, just a immigrant in this huge country and just like doing like, you know, living the dream, finally doing my thing, which is like playing drums. Honestly, it's just a cool band name. First first and foremost, right amount, perfect amount of syllables, right? Chicano Batman, just flows. The name actually occurred to me while watching the trailer of Hidlata Himix Perfume Nightmare, uh, which is the film. For me, Chicano Batman was born out of an admiration for the ways in which subaltern groups throughout the world, from black empowerment films, Brazilian cinema, world cinema, Low-budget, non-Hollywood films created a counter-narrative to the American status quo as we know it. Right now, Chicano Batman relates so much to the Black Lives Matter movement. You know, as much as it relates to any movement where people of color are under attack. And I think for us, um, we're not just saying Chicano Batman is, is a band of, of Latinos. It's a band inclusive of, of people that are going through the struggle. And I think, um, and I think for us, it, it's, it's constantly evolving. With the feels I'm on Yeah, yeah Calling my life Yeah, I think there's like really, you know, in a lot of pop culture, I think the fight for me is just like, just trying to find a real song, you know, like, like find like substance, you know, and there's lacks a lot of substance in, 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 in American pop culture, I feel. This new record is also musically, like in connection to what we've all been saying, like literally we're trying to create something, you know, that's like a Trojan horse that's gonna knock down these walls because we're tired of being, you know, pigeonholed into one argument or one way of thinking or that. It, it, our, our music is a direct response to literally everything we've experienced. Like Invisible People was so much fun where I think we definitely did reinvent ourselves. I think that song is like our, our, our hymn, you know, as a band. I think we've, we've been together this long. Um, things haven't changed. I think they've gotten worse, you know. Um, but I think with Chicano Batman at this point, we're at a place where creatively and artistically we can communicate what we have to with our music and we put words on our songs that resonate a lot with a lot of people. Um, we're trying to put ourselves on a platform where we can be heard by all kinds of people, not just Latinos, because our music is universal, you know? And I think um, that's one of the things that, um, that this album for us has really allowed us to do, expand our sound, expand our vision. It's also a statement saying that, yeah, we can do this, you know? And then so can you. I, I don't want anybody to define me, you know? Like, I don't want anybody to tell me, you know, like that's, that's, that's my job to say, hey, this is who I am, you know? Like part of my mission in life or something that I'm working towards is literally kind of getting rid of these boxes, you know, that, that we're kind of thrown into when we're born. And I think for me, music has been like literally the, the framework in which we could start doing that. So that's, that's, that's just kind of my take on it. Um, I think this record was the first time where I kind of openly shared with the band an overall idea of where the music that I was hearing in my head would go on this record. I, I just openly shared, hey, why don't we try this? Why don't we put away the organs for this record and put away the, the soul guitar rhythm playing and try to create space and a completely different kind of feeling than what we've done before to see what's possible. And um, I don't know, I think the... The results are 
definitely very different from the past record, which was the goal for me. A lot of the musicians that I that I idolized, like Miles Davis, um, Frank Zappa, um, Radiohead, they never make the same record twice. They're always creating the new era. And I don't know how possible or feasible that is in 2020, but that was definitely something to reach for. And even if we fell short, I feel like it created, it pushed us to create something at least very different from we had done from what we had done in the past. That's the struggle as an artist. You literally have to force your way into whatever the hell you want. You like you have to kind of be a little un unapologetic about it. Like you have to like. And to me, that's what it was for this record. And I'm glad Carlos pushed for everything that he pushed for. Before I was so staunchly against like corny, you know, like, you know, uh, chorus to guitars and this whole process of making music has expanded my mind, you know what I mean? But it's also like I could become a different person within this sound, you know? Yeah, I totally ap appreciate like people that, that talks about like from the inside and that's something that I, I see a lot on Bardo and I really appreciate about the way he is. He has this way of like, he's this poetry way of saying things and, uh, and he's like, like a uh, joven navegante, you know, he's like a, a sailor, he's like, exploring, he's with the La Libretita, you know, he's writing, he's writing his notes and, 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 and definitely like something that we're doing in this life and as artists too is just like point, point to that like reality of of us and that's something that for example on a on Manuel's story on Manuel's story it's a it, it's a that that song came out from Bardo's uncle experience and 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 that's something that I was just like damn this is crazy it's like how, how can that relate like and he hit me because I'm I'm kind of I'm, I'm Colombian so I I kind of live that reality too and so like I was like oh my god this is like this is real this can happen to any it's just like you know every love song you know like say in the 50s, right? Like you singers speak, speak from like the first person, generally speaking, right? So, you know, it's always part of the, the task, right? Try to make it relatable, uh, understandable. Um, also, I mean, I will say that I, I really appreciate artists that really speak from their own experience, you know? Because it's just like, that's how you, as a fan, start to create a, your relationship with that artist like like whoa i kind of feel like i know john lennon fucking hates war you know <laughs> he's super you know but but he's, he's it's never forced because it's literally just coming from his mind like it's literally this is what i feel you know this is what's going on in myself and so that's why it's always kind of feels real so i i always appreciate artists like my favorite artists are artists that do that now i'm heading for I don't think we're going to get on the road for a few more years. It's, it's a really crazy reality right now. I think, uh, you know, nature's growing harder than ever before because we've kind of given it a break. In a sense, I think we were getting, giving our spirit a break, you know, to catch up on a lot of things that we haven't for the last, um, I don't know, 38 years of my life. You know, this is kind of rare opportunity. Putting out an album, touring, etc. You know, like, you know, singles. I mean, you got to think differently. Zoom, I mean, if you want to keep performing with four squares for the next couple of years, you know, it's going to get old. You got to you gotta constantly, you got to push yourself to evolve. At the same time, it's like for us, we just got to take advantage of this time that we do have because it's precious.